fighting out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is one of the most famous professional athletes to ever walk the earth. From his success as a collegiate wrestler to professional wrestling in the WWF and WWE, to his short stint in the NFL as a Minnesota Viking, to his MMA career, and then back to professional wrestling. Continue watching to learn about Brock Lesnar's nine-fight mixed martial arts career. Before I get into today's video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more resume reviews. Thus far, I've done a Mondrikas Duplessis, Magomed Ankalaev, Shafkat Rachmanov, Bo Nickel, Anthony Johnson, Ilya Tapuria, Sean O'Malley, Jack Della Maddalena, TJ Dillashaw, Chris Weidman, and Al Brock Lesnar. I'll link the others in the description below. We'll begin with Lesnar's amateur wrestling career. A product of South Dakota, Lesnar grew up on a dairy farm, competing in football and wrestling as a high schooler. He placed third in the state championships as a senior before heading to an NJCAA school, or a junior college, where he placed fifth at nationals as a freshman. He won the national championships as a sophomore before he transferred to the University of Minnesota, an NCAA Division I school, where he placed second at nationals as a junior, taking home the silver medal before winning the national championships gold medal in 2000. So, out of the four years he competed on the mats in college between the D1 and junior college level, he placed in the top five each year, winning in two of those years, and placing second one of those years, compiling an astounding 106-5 and five record across 111 matches. Lesnar decided to go the professional wrestling role out of college. Eventually, he made his MMA debut in June of 2007, just one month shy of his 30th birthday, where he was intended to face Hong Man Choi in his pro debut at K1 Dynamite USA. Instead, Lesnar faced Min Seo Kim at this event, who though is 2-5 in MMA, is a 4-1 pro kickboxer with an Olympic silver medal in judo. Lesnar quickly took Kim down and assumed half guard before passing over into Maul, where he rained on strikes and route to his TKO victory 69 seconds in. After improving to just 1-0 as a professional, Brock was given a contract to compete in the UFC, where he made his debut in February of 2008 at UFC 81 opposing former heavyweight champion Frank Mir, who was 10-3 going into the fight. Lesnar got the takedown literally five seconds into the contest, and quickly had a point deducted for landing illegal blows to the back of Mir's head. Once the action resumed, Brock landed a nice right hand as Mir was throwing a kick and sat him back down. Lesnar was beating on Mir pretty badly while the fight lasted. He couldn't pass the guard of Mir, however, which led him to stand up, leaving his leg open for the taking where the high-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt wrapped up his leg and cemented him with a knee bar at 1.30 of the opening round. Now 31 years of age, Lesnar returned to the Octagon six months later at UFC 87 to face 28-13 and 13 Heath Herring when he was just 1-1 one one himself. He was originally slated to face Mark Coleman, an absolute legend and former UFC heavyweight champion, though Mark was forced to withdraw from the vault with an injury and was replaced by Herring. Herring certainly wasn't the best in the world by any means, but he was exactly 20 times as experienced as Lesnar going in. Just let that sink in for a second. 20 times more experience. And he'd fought the very best the sport had to offer, including Evan Tanner twice, Vitor Belfort, Mark Kerr, Big Nog three times, Igor Vochanchian, Fedor Emelianenko, Mirko Krokop, Gary Goodridge, and Czech Congo, amongst others, winning some of those fights mentioned. The experience didn't play a part whatsoever in this fight, as Lesnar dominated it from the opening bell. He landed a hard right hand that knocked Herring halfway across the octagon immediately once the ball began, and wrapped up a front headlock as Herring was working his way up. Once the two were back to striking range, Brock immediately secured a double-leg takedown and absolutely mauled Herring throughout the remaining four minutes or on one. After stuffing Brock's initial takedown attempt in the second, Herring came in and tied up with Brock, getting taken down in the process. Much like in the first round, Lesnar accumulated a lot of ground control time in the second, Herring eventually working his way back to his feet before he was taken down again at the end of it. Herring came out and pressured Lesnar early on in the third and final round, pressing him against the fence before he was reversed with his own back to the fence. Lesnar secured a duck under takedown and spent more time in top position, securing Malt for a time, before Herring got back to his feet and was taken down again, ending the fight on his back. This was an incredibly impressive performance by Lesnar, as he was awarded 30-26 scorecards from all three judges, and he'd gotten his first UFC win. Can you see me now? Can you see me now? This win awarded Lesnar a title shot at just 2-1, where he faced 16-8 UFC heavyweight champion Randy Couture a few months later in November at UFC 91. The two initiated a clinch early, which was always where Couture did his best work. He pressed Lesnar into the fence, Lesnar landing some good knees to the body before reversing the position and pushing Couture into the fence where he landed some more good knees, these ones to the legs of the champion. And just look at these nasty knees, I mean, they knocked Couture back a couple feet. Lesnar shot in on a double leg, and while Couture initially defended it well, he was ultimately taken down and put on his back with this behemoth of a man on top of him. 
Couture got back up and took Lesnar down for a split second, before being reversed again and ending up on bottom. Randy once again got back up with one minute remaining in the opening round and tried to take Lesnar down, nearly accomplishing the feat, but couldn't quite secure it. Brock landed a nice right elbow at the start of the second that backed Randy up. As Lesnar came into his range, Randy turned his back to the fence and continued trying to wear on his inexperienced adversary. Lesnar landed a good knee to the head as they were separating, eating a pair of right hands himself in the exchange. Couture landed another clean right hand when they were back at striking range, Brock of which unsuccessfully shot in on a double leg. After failing on the attempt, he was once again pressed under the fence, eventually separating and landing another big knee on the exit. Lesnar then landed a slick right cross that dropped Couture, where he rained on punchers from top position to secure the TKO victory at 3.07 of round 2, and he was now the UFC heavyweight champion at just 3-1 and one as a professional. Lesnar went into his first title defense against the only man to ever defeat him, interim UFC heavyweight champion Frank Mir, who was now 12-3 and three as a professional and had just claimed the interim title one pay-per-view event later at UFC 92 where he became the first man to ever stop Antonio Rodrigo Noguera. The two were set to headline the biggest event mixed martial arts had ever had to date, UFC 100, and a champion versus champion main event clash. Mir came in for an exchange in the early goings of the ball, Lesnar taking him down immediately. Mir tried to wrap up his leg again, just like he did in their first fight, but Lesnar was wise to it and assumed top position. Lesnar chilled in Mir's half guard for the remaining four plus minutes of the opening round, raining down good ground and palm. Lesnar secured another takedown to begin the second, but allowed Mir to get back to his feet where he came in with a barrage of strikes, Mir eventually ending up on his back again after throwing a knee. Lesnar laid in Mir's half guard again, this time brilliantly trapping his left arm before raining down nasty punches from top position, and the fight was stopped at 148 of round 2. Lesnar the victor via TKO, and he was still the UFC heavyweight champion with his first title defense out of the way. Lesnar returned to the Octagon a year later in July of 2010 to face the new interim champion Shane Carwin in another champion vs. champion main event at UFC 116. Carwin came into the ball with a perfect 12-0 record, all 12 wins coming via first-round finish with 8 knockouts and 4 submissions, including a 4-0 run in the UFC with his last two wins coming over Gabriel Gonzaga and Frank Mir, the Mir fight of which he claimed the interim title in three months earlier. Carwin, like Lesnar, was also an accomplished wrestler, a Division II national champion and two-time Division II national championship silver medalist. Carwin landed a good right hand as Lesnar was coming in, Lesnar of which attempted to secure a takedown, but unsuccessfully. Carwin then landed a lead uppercut that stunned Brock and backed him up. Lesnar continued searching for the takedown, but to no avail. Lesnar eventually dropped and ate an absurd amount of damage throughout much of round one. He got back to his feet with one minute left on the clock and searched for the takedown along the fence throughout the remainder of the opening round. The first round two of Shane Carwin's career wasn't a good one for him. He was clearly exhausted, not moving forward, and throwing very labored punches. Brock secured a double leg early on in the second, settling in Carwin's half guard before passing over as he locked up an arm triangle choke, finishing the fight with it at 219 of the romp. Brock Lesnar had just tied the UFC heavyweight title defense record with two straight, shocking much of the MMA fan base in doing so. And to this day, only one man has surpassed that record, Stipe Miocic, who managed to defend the title three straight times during his first reign as champion. Lesnar's next test came later that year in October at UFC 121, when he aimed to make the third defense of his title against Cain Velasquez, who was 8-0 with seven knockouts going in. Cain, much like Brock, had matured as a mixed martial artist in front of the UFC audience, debuting in the promotion at just 2-0 and going 6-0 in the UFC to date. Lesnar put his foot on the gas the second the ball started, storming into Cain with a takedown attempt followed by a barrage of knees to the body. About 25 seconds in, he secured a double leg takedown, though King got back to his feet quickly. Brock continued searching for the takedown along the fence, Velasquez eventually breaking free and getting back to striking range. Kane ended up getting Brock on, where he attacked with some punches from top turtle position before Lesnar got back to his feet. From here, Velasquez caught him with a left hand in an exchange, Lesnar tumbling across the octagon where he was followed by the challenger, eating a few heavy punches and a nasty knee up the middle that dropped him. Velasquez mauled and bloodied Lesnar even worse from here, the onslaught going on until the referee was forced to stop the action at 412 of the first, and we had a new UFC heavyweight champion. Following this fight, Lesnar coached the Ultimate Fighter 13 alongside future UFC heavyweight champion Junior Dos Santos, who he was intended to face at the season's end at UFC 131. However, Lesnar was forced from the ball with another case of diverticulitis, where he had to get 12 inches of his colon removed, which is literally just the most unnerving thing to think about. This kept him out of competition for some time. Nonetheless, Lesnar's third pick, Tony Ferguson, went on to win the show. Lesnar eventually returned to the Octagon 14 months later to welcome former Strike Force and Dream Heavyweight Champion Alistair Overeem to the UFC, where the two headlined UFC 141 opposing one another. Overeem of which was 35-11 and 11 as a professional going in on an 11-fight unbeaten streak with 9 finishes. What's more, he boasted a win over the last man to defeat him in Sergei Karatonov. 
Lesnar ended up opening up a cut over Overeem's right eye in the early goings of the fight. Overeem backed Lesnar up to the fence where he landed a nasty knee to the body soon after. Overeem continued attacking Lesnar's body with absolutely vicious knees. Honestly, this is something Brock had become quite good at himself, clinching his opponents and landing solid knees to the body. But Overeem is a world champion kickboxer, and I'll go ahead and say his knees had far more impact on them. He didn't let up, cornering Lesnar along the fence where he kept landing knee after knee before going upstairs with punches to the head. Overeem then let go on a nasty wrong kick to the body that hurt Lesnar badly, dropping him, and it only took a few follow-up shots for the referee to stop the fight, seeing Overeem the victor via TKO at 226 of round 1. Honestly, it's surprising Lesnar didn't try to wrestle more in this one. Lesnar went back to professional wrestling after his eight-fight stint in MMA, eventually returning to the Octagon four and a half years later in July of 2016 at UFC 200, facing another K1 world champion in 12-10-1 Mark Hunt. Though Hunt hadn't had a good record in years, he was still a very dangerous matchup for many heavyweights on the roster. After going 5-1 to begin his MMA career, picking up wins over Vanderlei Silva and Mirko Krokop in just his third and fourth professional fights, Hunt would lose his next six straight, falling to five and seven as a professional. Since then, however, Hunt had gone seven, three, and one with six knockouts leading into his UFC 200 appearance against Lesnar, defeating the likes of Ben Rothwell, Chet Congo, Stefan Struve, Roy Nelson, Bigfoot Silva, and Frank Mir in that time. The losses coming to Junior Dos Santos, Fabricio Verdum in a title fight, and Stipe Miocic, literally the very best the sport had to offer, all three of which are multi-time world champions. Hunt entered this fight on a two-fight win streak, while Lesnar hadn't fought in a substantial amount of time and came in on a two-fight losing streak, both losses via first-round knockout. But Lesnar was clearly abusing steroids in the lead-up to this fight, and the UFC and USADA still let him compete, something that would result in a lawsuit being filed against the promotion, courtesy of Mark Hunt. Brock opened up the ball very cautious, as he probably should have, evading an overhand right thrown by Hunt and shooting in on a single leg takedown two minutes in. Though he didn't secure the single, he reshot a double leg up against the fence and secured that one. Hunt got back to his feet quickly, but was again taken down with a single leg and controlled throughout the rest of round one. Hunt controlled most of the second by walking Lesnar down, who appeared to be tiring. Lesnar shot in on three takedown attempts in round two, Hunt of which stopped all three of them. But at the start of the third and final round, Lesnar shot in on a single, switching it to a double before finishing it just 30 seconds in, having Hunt mounted for over half the round. By the fight's end, there were three 29-27 scorecards, all in favor of Lesnar, who walked away the victor via unanimous decision though the bolt would later be overturned to a no contest as a result of Brock's failed drug test. This would be the final ball to Brock Lesnar's MMA career at 38 years of age, which had originally improved him to 6-3 as a professional, but of course once it got overturned, his record has sat at 5-3 with a no contest since. Brock Lesnar defied all odds when he began his MMA career. He faced a former world champion in just his second professional fight, a fight he looked good in, mind you, though lasting just 90 seconds. Then he fought a 40-plus fight veteran when he was just 1-1 one one as a professional and won all three rounds, handily winning all three. He outstruck Herring 45-9 in significant strikes, 96-41 in total strikes, and secured five takedowns in six attempts. He fought for a title when he was just 2-1, and, and not just any title, obviously, but the UFC Heavyweight Championship against a three-time UFC Heavyweight Champion and two-time UFC Light Heavyweight Champion. Randy Couture was also a two-time NCAA Division I National Championship silver medalist, a Pan American Games gold medalist, a Pan American Championships gold medalist, and two-time World Cup bronze medalist in Greco-Roman wrestling, not to mention a three-time Olympic alternate. Lesnar outstruck Couture 31 to 11 in significant strikes, 68 to 17 in total strikes, and secured two takedowns on four attempts, getting taken down once himself while stuffing Couture's other two. After claiming the title and residing as the UFC's heavyweight champion with a record of just three and one, which is unbelievable, really, it'll never happen again. He defended in back-to-back -back fights against a pair of interim champions, and like he did in his title shot, secured second round finishes in each affair. First, there was the Frank Mir rematch, which looked a lot like their first fight, only it lasted longer and Brock didn't get submitted. He instead outstruck Mir 47-4 in significant strikes and 74-4 in total strikes and route to his second round stoppage. After absorbing Shane Carwin's best shots, 61 in total, shots that stopped every last one of his opponents prior, Lesnar took him down in the second and picked up the first and only submission victory of his career with an impressive arm triangle choke. Then he lost his belt to the man some still believe to be the greatest heavyweight of all time, and lost his fight to a roided up Alistair Overeem a year later. He then came back roided up himself and beat Mark Hunt in a relatively meaningless fight, but it added excitement to UFC 200, and it was good to see Brock go out on a win, regardless of whether or not it was later overturned. I mean, sure, he never liked getting hit, and it was evident in some of his fights, but after going back and watching all of them, he did get hit more than I previously realized, and all but two times, he didn't get stopped. 
Look at those two that did stop him with strikes. Kane Velasquez, a man that finished 12 of his 14 total wins by knockout. And Alistair Overeem, a man with 25 knockouts throughout his MMA career, a kickboxing world champion, and someone that had 10 knockouts and 12 total UFC wins. Lesnar not enjoying being hit has got to be due to the fact that he didn't begin his MMA career until he was nearly 30 years old. Imagine if he started training and fighting in MMA out of college. Then imagine if he never got sick. He could have gone down as one of, if not the greatest to ever do it. Brock Lesnar is a better athlete than just about anyone in MMA history. I mean, who else that stands 6'3 and weighs almost 300 pounds can do a backflip while jumping forward? He's absolutely massive. One of the better wrestlers the sport, much less the heavyweight division, has ever seen. And he had a good set of skills for someone that only did it for a short time. For someone who won the UFC heavyweight title in just his fourth ever fight and went on to tie the record for most title defenses by time he had only six, it's incredible what this man did in his time as a mixed martial artist, and it'll probably never be replicated. Brock Lesnar was an absolutely massive star. He was the Conor McGregor before there was Conor McGregor. Sure, the UFC had stars previous, like Hoist Gracie, Ken and Frank Shamrock, Tito Ortiz, and Chuck Liddell, amongst others, but no one drew more eyeballs to the UFC cage than Lesnar did until Conor or Ronda Rousey came along. He didn't need the money. He didn't need the fame. He wanted to test himself against MMA's top heavyweights, and he was literally thrown right to the wolves right out of the gate, where he passed many of those tests, going down as a two-time defending UFC heavyweight champion. That about does it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to click the like button and subscribe to my channel, maybe even tap the notification bell, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.